Welcome back to Racing Across America. As promised before the break, and we're happy to be joined now by Martha Clausen from Sam Houston. Going to put Sam Houston in our mix on Tuesdays to give uh, viewers a little info on Sam Houston as their meet uh, progresses. Martha, good morning. Well, thank you, Seth. We're just delighted to be able to join your broadcast. And we're happy to have you on board. And for folks who are going to be playing uh, Sam Houston on Tuesdays and maybe aren't familiar with Sam Houston, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, some of the human side of the game. And I pulled up, and I was looking at some stakes uh, last Saturday, and some of the names I think will be familiar to people of uh, trainers who are uh, running at Sam Houston, either regularly or because you're down there near fairgrounds in Oaklawn. Folks will certainly ship in. Saw names this weekend like uh, Carl Broberg, the leading trainer in the country uh, last year. You see uh, Steve Asmussen is on your uh, leaders list right now among the trainers. Mike Maker, I know, had some runners uh, on the weekend. So certainly on the human side, you have some, uh, both on jockeys and trainers side, some names to keep uh, paying attention to. Absolutely. And one of the things we're very excited about is one of our veteran riders, Sean Parker. Uh, fans might know him from Mountaineer and uh, Tur Turfway. Uh, he's wintered here. Uh, this is his second year. Really like Sam Houston. Loves our turf and our dirt main track, and he's closing in on a huge milestone today. He, he enters today's races, which begin at 1 p.m. Central, uh, with 4,699 wins. Uh, and uh, he's got six mounts today. He won four yesterday. Oh. So I think there's a very good chance that he's going to hit the 4,700 uh, milestone. Uh, according to Equibase, he will become just the 36th 36 leading all-time rider, and he's going to be right behind the legendary Eddie Arcaro. So that's a pretty huge milestone. We're thrilled right. to have Deshaun down here. Super nice guy and very capable rider. I'm assuming the track has, as always in these kind of situations, the big painted poster that will be able to hold up in the uh, winter circle. And <laughs> we're, we're definitely working on it. A uh, really <laughs> crazy week for us. With um, <clears throat> We just opened last week with Texas champions and now we're getting ready for our Houston Ladies Classic but well, we are going to try so hard to honor him uh, and do something nice today when he uh, when he eclipses that milestone. Because it always seems when the track has that thing painted and wait, waiting in the winter circle <laughs> and the jockey then brings his family to the track they're coming to the track for like a week before he yeah. gets that one one win he needs it never seems to fail but we'll oh. certainly be watching and ruining. Oh you're 100% right I jinxed poor H.B. Johnson about a decade ago I think he was going to close in on the milestone and went 0 for 28 it lasted for a week you're absolutely right and I, I couldn't look him in the eye for, uh, for but he for, he eventually forgave me you know? yeah, it, it, it never seems to fail for some reason it always works out that way but we'll see if Deshaun can turn things around and uh, get over the hump and get through that because that is he, he is a guy that uh, uh, floats a little under the radar but yeah. if you pay attention, he is a prolific winner, so it's certainly not a surprise to see him up there with those kind of numbers. Yeah, and Seth, one other thing that people don't know, he's about the most uh, unassuming, unpretentious human being you'll ever meet. He's a family man. He just goes about his business so quietly and effortlessly. Very popular in the jocks room, too. Several of the younger riders have told me that they look up to him, they love his work ethic, his dedication, his commitment. And, you know, there's... <laughs> I've always said, and I'm sure you might agree, jockeys are the most underrated athletes. In oh, the absolutely. Universe, you know, absolutely. Yeah, no question about it. All yeah. right, uh, for folks who are going to play Sam Houston this afternoon, just give us a little idea what the weather might look like. Uh, it's good. We had a lot of fog this morning, but it's supposed to clear up and be cool. And uh, Well, not cool. I mean, nice by our temperatures in the 60s and some <laughs> sunshine, fast and firm. It'll be really nice. Uh, we're pr predicting good weather, maybe a little rain on Thursday, and then drying up for our big weekend. Yeah, it's always funny hearing the pe you people talk on the, that southern <laughs> tier. I talked to the folks from Gulfstream or Tampa. And, yeah, it's a little cool today. It's low 70s. For us, uh, I, I shouldn't laugh. I grew up in Buffalo, New York, so I shouldn't even mention Yeah, well, then, then, you, then you're then you right in tune with what we're having uh, yeah, this exactly. past week and a half or so. Don't miss it. Don't yeah. miss it, no. <laughs> uh, no, I had, Ron, there, Ron Nicoletti from Gulfstream tells a great story about he was up in New York City walking down the street one winter day walking backwards because it was that kind of that sleet rain that hits you in the face and he said to himself what am i doing here and he was like it was the next week he was in florida that's what i said when i was seven years old and then i went to college in miami so i can hunt oh, up very, good. To that. very good all right uh, and uh, uh just before we move on and I, I do want to preview a little bit the really nice card you have coming up on saturday but before we do that again for folks who are playing and we're kind of early in your meet. Has anything jumped out as maybe a bias that folks should pay attention to? Uh, well, no, not yet, because we just opened Friday, and we've had really good weather, which, you know, makes a big difference in the turf course. You know, a lot of people, Seth, have 
the highest regard for our Connolly Turf Course. Uh, you know, it's just because we're lucky we can kind of reseed in the uh, in the after the summer and grow this very plush, really beautiful grass. Uh, Rosie Napravnik, who, you know, is now on maternity leave, but was a big star in Sam Houston, came in and she said, it's like a golf course. It's the nicest turf. So that's been fast and firm. And uh, and then the main track, we have a really, really good composite there, very safe, very um, forgiving. And, uh, you know, basically all the jockeys said it was riding really well over the weekend. All right. And let's talk about some of these uh, stakes you have coming up on Saturday. Preview that because it's really one of the highlights of your program, obviously, with the ladies and the uh, Connolly on the card. But uh, the uh, stakes action kicks off the Frontier Utilities Turf Sprint, which uh, I kind of laughed this morning when I pulled up the past performances. I'm not sure the racing form really wants to use the abbreviation they use, but I'll pass on that. It is the Frontier <laughs> Utilities Turf Sprint, $75,000. This is a fun five furlong turf sprint. A, you have uh, uh, Tai in there, who is yep. uh, really a nice sprinter that we've seen the past couple of seasons over at Fairgrounds, but right. he's uh, scheduled to come over for Tommy Amos. Holiday Mischief uh, through some triple-digit buyers up at Canterbury this summer. P.D. Kramer comes in. You have to pay attention to that one because, as you mentioned, Rosie Napravnik, her husband, Joe Sharp, who sure. is so... so so special at the start of the career, you can't ignore anything he uh, sends no. out. But it's a nice, full turf sprint field. What were your thoughts in the uh, turf sprint? Well, we're delighted. And as you said, you know, hey, Ty or hi, Ty, or however we want to pronounce it, he's a superstar in this region. Uh, Tom Amos, interestingly enough, won this race last year with some of the parts. He set a new track record, five furlongs on the turf. Now, he was claimed by Carl Broberg. We mentioned all the big hitters, but he was mentioned he won't be back for this race. But, you know, James Graham, this is another rider. Um, you know, you guys, if you're watching uh, down in the south, James Graham, well, he's going to be the leading rider this year with Rosie on maternity leave. But he's uh, unbelievable, got a beautiful clock in his head for riding the turf. Uh, two, and he's, he they drew the three-hole, and from the five-hole, you're right. you got P.D. Kramer, Joe Sharp, uh, not a bad pilot there, just the Eclipse Award-winning uh, rider, Javier Castellano, <laughs> who we're thrilled to welcome back to Sam Houston. He's ridden here before in the Connolly. A couple years back, he hasn't won a stake here, but uh, I think he's, he might be off the schneid this weekend. Uh, so those two look pretty tough in the first leg. Now, you know, this is the other thing. I'm glad you, you brought up these races in order because this is going to kick off our $100,000 guaranteed pick four. And normally we do the pick four Saturday night on Sam Houston's races, seven through 10, but we wanted to make this an all stakes pick four. So we kick it off with the, with those horses. Very, very tricky. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I think those two are the ones to beat, but on the very far outside, You've got a horse named Global Power. Um, he's a seven-year-old son of Pulpit. He's racing for Carl Broberg. Uh, you know, it, it, five for a long sprint, sometimes he came from Del Mar, San Antonio. Um, you know, he, maybe sometimes on the far outside, that's a nice post to have. Just draw out quickly and get out to the front. So I wouldn't dismiss him if I was going to go a little deeper in my ticket. Yeah, and then you look at the connections. It is Carl Broberg. And we, as we said, he was the leading trainer last year. It's also a loose racing who uh, upset that Sunshine Millions Classic down at Gulfstream on Saturday. So they, they, I think they're on a little roll. They ran second in the, uh, I think it was the LeCompte as well. as either the LeCompte or the Silver Bullet Day. So the stable might be on a little bit of a roll too. Right. So that's an interesting first leg of the race. And hopefully, like I say, a little bit of rain on Thursday, but then we're predicting uh, fast and firm for Saturday night. Sounds good. Uh, the sixth uh, on Saturday night is the Allen's Landing. Uh, and I will say, I'm looking at the past performances. They're available right now. If people want to get an early start on that stakes pick four, you can pick up the past performances and start your work right now. But the Allen's Landing, $50,000, three-year-olds going seven furlongs. A and you have, again, this just indicates what kind of a night it is down there because you have some absolutely big names coming in. Al Stahl comes in with Waging War, who uh, won a nice optional claimer at Fairgrounds last time out. Uh, Super Stroke. Uh, threw in a dud in the uh, springboard mile, but it was behind Bayer. That one ran nicely in the LeCompte this weekend, I thought. That one's cross-centered, so we're not quite sure whether that one will go, but I think eh, maybe a long shot to pay attention to. But then on the outside, uh, you have Exodus from Larry Jones, who was a nice maiden breaker with a good number at Fairgrounds last time, and Fusaichi Flame uh, also ran well in a uh, stakes race at Delta Downs last time. So again, another nice competitive field. Yeah, this is a great race. Um, you know, really, in, in the past We've had some very nice horses that have emerged uh, from this, made their debut in this, and gone on to national um, uh, prominence. 
And uh, one horse I think we might want to look at is the number four bagpipe. Eric Reed, the Kentucky horseman, this is his second year at Sam Houston. Of course, he and Deshaun Parker are a powerhouse team. And this horse uh, comes in from a, an allowance optional a win at uh, Turfway Park on the 28th. It looked like he turned it around up there. So, um, you know, I think the horse is down here in training. Some of them will be shipped in, Seth, but some of them are here in training. So bagpipes, number four, might be a good horse to include as well. All right, we'll take a look at that one. And then moving on, the uh, two big uh, races of the uh, evening kick off with the uh, Connolly in race number seven, a grade three event. $200,000 on the line. These are four and up going a mile and an eighth on the grass. Uh, dreams cut short. Interesting because it's Mike Maker. Uh, right. But Mike Maker, probably the one that intrigues me the most, a horse that I've liked for a, for a long time now, Coalport, because it's Mike Maker and Ken and Sarah Ramsey. This one comes off a uh, uh, win up at Hawthorne most recently. But I think that, as I say, it's a horse that I've found very, very intriguing for the past couple of seasons. And Trace Creek for uh, Ken McPeak in some very good form right now. The Connolly, yet another one with a big competitive field. What are your thoughts? Oh, it, absolutely. Colport. I mean, anybody who ever ignores Kitten's Joy in the yeah. turf, a graded turf race is pretty much crazy. But again, Javier Castellano, that'll be the second mount for him on the card. I think, obviously, he's probably given his choice between the two. Uh, but Colport looks very strong. Bim Bam, uh, the number nine horse uh, for Ron Maquette, looks very tough, too. He's eight, you know, deputy wildcat. But, I, I, you know, I just feel like Ron's having a great meet. He just won a big one up at uh, Oaklawn. And, um, you know, several of these horses are making their Sam Houston race park debuts, but he beat a tough field in the DeBartolo at Remington Park and, um, you know, had back-to-back -back, had three wins in a row before he got that snap at Keeneland. So Bim Bam might be another really, really fine horse. Deshaun Parker rides uh, for uh, – and one interesting thing about Deshaun, when he came down last year, he was the second leading rider, which was great. Nobody really knew him that well, but he didn't win one stake. So when I was talking to him earlier this week, he said, I missed my goal. I just want to win one stakes here. So he'd be thrilled <laughs> to win the grade three Connolly. Yeah, you can understand that. When a guy wins like that, you want to get the, the big ones on your resume as well Absolutely. at these various meets. So maybe a little hungry uh, in the Connolly. In the... Uh, Eighth race at Sam Houston on Saturday night. The Houston Ladies Classic, $400,000. Phillies and Mayors, four and up, going a mile and a 16th on the main track. Tommy Amos and Maggie Moss bring in uh, Kiss to Remember off a win in the Pago Hop and off the turf event most recently over at Fairgrounds. Shannon Nicole is a Mike Maker runner. That last time out in the Zia Park Oaks, Ran, you know, maybe a disappointing third in there as the 7-5 to five favorite, but that was coming off a couple of wins at Indiana Grand and Remington Park and the Remington Park Oaks. And Cassatt, I think, is going to be very, very intriguing for Larry Jones. Comes in off a win in the Tiffany Last most recently over at the fairgrounds. What were your thoughts on the ladies? Well, we have a lot of history in this race with Larry Jones. He won the inaugural running of this race. This is just the third running. So a couple of years ago, he brought in a very, very, very nice mayor by the name of Joyful Victory. She not only won, but she set a new track, or, track record for the distance of a mile and a 16th. And Larry, oh, he's just the best. I mean, he's just the best guy. And he's such a, a consummate horse, horseman, and he's so darn, darn nice. You know, we just love Larry. <laughs> So, um, you know, he'll, he'll, you know, when he comes in, you just know he's got good horses. And, of course, the sat was all the talk out of Zia and then turned it around with another win in the Tiffany last. Uh, you know, so two for two, just really rounding into form. Larry told me a very interesting story. You know, this is a Tappet uh, filly. And he, and you know, obviously, Joyful Victory was as well. And he said, you know, they are head cases. Uh, well, he didn't say it that way, but he said they, they take time and they take time to develop and they want to do it at their own speed. And they're not early developers. You know, you don't see his, his mares have not won early. A Joyful Victory, I think, was five when she won this. And he likens Cassatt a lot to Joyful Victory in that she's slow to mature, but she's finally getting it. So he's very high on her. Uh, she drew the eight hole. And then on the far inside, he's got a little more lightly rest race, uh, five-year-old daughter of Curlin by the name of Blue Violet. And she's coming in. She actually had a, um, a stakes win in the Lady Secret at, at Monmouth. Um, and so she, she's a good possibility as well. She races for a Houston owner. So, you know, it's always nice to see local people. Kiss to remember. Couldn't agree more with you in terms of the class of that mare. And then did want to point out one interesting thing about Shannon Nicole. You know, she, she was third to... Um, uh, in the Zia Oaks, but look at that bullet she just 
just ran at fairground yeah. training on the 14th. That is something you better not ignore when you're uh, putting together your tickets for that race. Um, our defending champion, do not want to ignore her, uh, Rose to Gold, who drew the three holes. She's closing in on the $1 million mark in earnings. A little bit of a puzzler in her past performances because she won our race last year and then, you know, hadn't done a whole lot this year. But uh, trainer Sal Santoro says that she's training well and she got what she needed out of her prep in the Miami Shores, and he feels confident with her. Uh, we have another uh, Florida horse that just uh, shipped in yesterday, Angelica Zapata, who will come from the sixth hole. And this is another game mare. She's, she's earned over $500,000 for Ron Pellegrini. He, he, he thinks very highly of her. He says she's so smart. She'll put herself in the race wherever she needs to be, and he just thinks that, you know, she'll do what she needs to do. Um, and, of course, she's exiting grade three company. This is a listed but not graded stake, so she's a possibility, too. I think you got really six strong contenders in this $400,000 uh, stake on Saturday night, which will conclude the uh, $100,000 guarantee. Pick four. Yeah, it looks like a fun night, as you say, in all stakes pick four. As I said, the past performances are up if people want to get a head start. So by all means, uh, you can do that really nice stakes program on Saturday at Sam Houston. And Martha, before we let you go, I'm just curious, and I don't know whether you've heard anything or not, but Steve Asmussen, uh, a Texas-based guy, and I'm just wondering if there was any buzz over the past week or so when the Kentucky Racing Commission came out and essentially exonerated Steve Asmussen in the light of that uh, PETA New York Times uh, controversy early in uh, 2014. I wonder if there was any kind of buzz on the backstretch that you heard about. No, really not too much buzz because I think a lot of people, um, I'll speak for myself on this, uh, is that I think a lot of people who know Steve, who've worked with him, you know, he's huge in Texas, his family's from Texas. A lot of us really felt like the PETA thing was a total sensationally over-exaggerated situation. It, it was, it continued to be. And, you know, in a lot of our minds, <laughs> it wasn't even an issue. It was just something that he had to go through. I really applaud him for the way that he didn't react. He just let it, you know, you know, it was interesting because a lot of people were saying, oh, Scott won't come back. And I felt like, you know, once this blew over, he would get Scott back. They are very close, and he got Scott back. So, you know, I think on the backside, a lot of people down here who know Steve and his family for decades, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't even it wasn't even a – you know, a salient, uh, uh, you know, concern. They'd all put it to rest right after the PETA explosion because that's the way PETA does. Yeah, it explodes it, with no merit. <laughs> yeah, we talked about it here uh, at the time, and then this past Sunday morning, I'm in here uh, uh, with the show Loose on the Lead on Sunday mornings with Steve huh? Vick, the Sirius and XM radio host, and we had Jay Pribman on with us on Sunday morning, and we were all kind of talking about it. And we said it at the time, and we reiterated uh, in light of what came out with the Kentucky, that, it was just a sensational story. That uh, I think the journalism was not good. I don't think the New York Times did the kind of background they should have done on that. And to refer to this woman as a PETA investigator, <laughs> I always thought was a little dicey because, uh, you know, an investigation is something you come into with a fair mind and an open mind. And I think they came in with an ag agenda, and I think it was sensationalized from the beginning. And I agree with you there that it wound up uh, a, a good outcome. And it's nice to see that the people who know Steve Asmussen kind of uh, were, were with, of that state of mind from the beginning, it sounds like. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you one quick story about Steve, and this is the stuff that isn't reported, but he claimed a horse from Broberg, um, who was a really, really nice uh, uh, turf horse down here, and he won a whole bunch of races with him. And when it was time for the horse to retire, uh, <laughs> he, he basically called the breeder himself, and he said, you know, the horse is finished. It was a gelding, so we're going to be bred you want him back. And he took the time to call this gentleman in Oklahoma and send the horse back to him. His name was Scrappy Roo. And he sent him back to his breeder and his uh, original breeder in Oklahoma because he wanted him to have a good home and retirement. And these are the things that aren't pointed out when you're trying to point out the bad in racing. You know, I've been in this business for, you know, a uh, couple, you know, going on three decades. And I'm just a firm believer, let's put out some good news yeah. about the good people and the good stories behind racing. And let's just not be, you know, put underwater, put our heads underwater with the negative hype. You know, there's too many good, hardworking people in this sport, and I'm proud to be a part of it and publicize the good people. And that's the way I feel. 
And no. that, you know, that's a great point, and that's something we brought up too in light of what, what this story over the past year. The industry just is not proactive enough in these situations to go out and put forth the good stories and to fight back on stories like this. Uh, we tend to just uh, say, thank you, may I have another kind of a situation and, and bury our heads a little bit. Um, but this, this one, uh, we'll see how the New York investigation comes out, but with the Kentucky investigation, it's, it's having a, the ending uh, we, we hope for, certainly. Yeah. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And it's a good, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because he is somebody very, very, very popular in Texas. And his parents, you know, still have a training center down here and have produced a lot of great champions. And, uh, you know, he's, he's had huge huge milestones in all three Texas tracks, especially at Sam Houston. So you know, I, just, I just thought, speaking of his family, I hadn't thought, is Cash still training? Uh, no, uh, I think I'm not 100% sure what he's doing these days. He had some horses in training for several years in, yeah. in, in Sam Houston, but I haven't seen him. But I know that he, he goes to Laredo and he helps out Keith, you know, <laughs> Steve's dad, Keith. I don't even know how old he is. He's ageless, but he still gets on horses every morning and works them. I mean, it's just crazy. And his mom is adorable, and, you know, Steve and his wife have three sons. So it's a very big family, and, uh, you know, they're very proud of each other, and they support each other through thick and thin. Uh, so I'm not sure 100% what Cash has been doing lately. For several years, he had a spring at Sam Houston, but um, he doesn't have any this year. Yeah, and he also had some out in Southern California for a while, I know. Yeah. And I, as we were talking, I thought, gee, I haven't seen his name. For a while, so I was curious about that. Steve, of course, in the family we see up here at Saratoga every summer. We're just down the road from Saratoga, so we see him plenty during the racing season up here. We were certainly watching this story closely, but I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Martha, uh, absolutely appreciate our first visit. Again, Sam Houston is in our mix uh, uh, during their season on Tuesdays, and we're in a rotating basis. So we appreciate the visit this morning, and I guess we'll talk to you again in two weeks. Yeah, my pleasure. It really, uh, we appreciate your support of Sam Houston. Hope that the fans are enjoying our product and uh, look forward to talking to you in two weeks. Tom Harris, who's our announcer, will be your guest next week, and he's very, very, very good talking about racing and people and all the good stuff at Sam Houston. Uh, next up, Tom Harris. We're looking forward to it. Martha, again, thanks a lot.